you want to be looking at the problems through that lens. Okay, you want to be looking at the problems through this lens. So let's let's review that. So constant rate of change. So two quantities vary together at constant rate of change if and there were three things that we talked about. And so and this is the last thing on your quiz. Your quiz, you're going to write these out in complete sentences. Okay. Uh, maybe slightly different. I think I said two quantities A and B, right? Two quantities A and B um, change together with constant rate of change if equal changes in one quantity result in consistent changes of the other. Equal changes of one quantity result in consistent changes of the other. And I'm going to show you examples of this in a second, or an illustration of this, but this should be familiar. The change in one quantity is a constant multiple of the corresponding change in the other quantity. Okay? And then corresponding changes in the two quantities maintain a constant ratio. Okay, so hopefully these are more than just kind of complicated statements, right? It should, it should make sense. It should make sense. And as you're doing problems, you're, you're looking at problems through this lens, applying and thinking about these principles to help you solve the problem. Okay, that's the point. It's not about step-by-step -step method. Oh, here's this type of problem. Here's step one. Here's step two. Here's step three. Okay, no, it's more about what's going on here. What's the situation? And, and how can I use one or more of these things to make progress, understanding what's going on and, and working towards a solution? Okay, so let's, let's look at them all here. So the first one, equal changes in one quantity result in consistent changes of the other. So here, uh, here's a relationship between x and y. And when you look at this line, what do you see? What is that? You see slope. Many points. Many points. That's what I tried to teach you last week. When you see a graph, whether it's a line or a curve, what you're really looking at there is is more points than we could count and more points that we could do one at a time. So we do a, we do a quick easy method of just drawing you know, a line or a curve because that's a lot faster than drawing all the points. But what it really is is a lot of points. And if we have constant rate of change, then we get a line. We get a line between the relationship between these two quantities. So the first thing here, equal changes in one quantity. So here I'm showing you equal changes in x, OK? Whenever you apply an equal change in x, what do you get? What does this tell you that we get? Yeah, the corresponding changes in y will all be consistent. They'll be equal to each other. OK, so if you apply the same change in x every time with constant rate of change, you're going to get the same resulting change in y, right? If you got a different change in y for the same change in x, then it, you wouldn't have constant change, right? You would have you would have a, a changing chain, changing rate of change. Okay. Next one, the change of one quantity is a constant multiple of the corresponding change in the other. So this is a way that we think of this: how do we how do we calculate that resulting change? How do we calculate that resulting change? Well, it's always the same multiple of the corresponding change in, in this case, x. Okay, so this change is always is k times its change in x. This change in y is that same k times its change in x. This change in y is that same k times its change in x. So in other words, delta y is, k is a constant, some constant times the change in x. This is really powerful in solving problems. We need to find the resulting change. How do we do it? Well, we can take, we, if we know our constant rate, it's always that constant rate times whatever change in x we have. Okay, then the third perspective on constant rate of change is corresponding changes in the two quantities maintain a constant ratio. Okay, so this ratio of delta y to delta x is the same for all three or any any change in x and its corresponding change in y will will maintain this ratio okay and I'm, we're calling that k we're calling that k and that k is that is the constant rate of change it's how fast y is changing with respect to x that k is the constant rate of change 
So what about slope? What was your formula for slope in the past? How did you calculate slope before? Yeah, so slope was, wasn't it, you, you had two points and you took y2 minus y1 divided by what? x2 minus x1. Okay, but what is y2 minus y1? Yeah, that's our chain. Remember, a final value of a quantity minus initial value of a quantity is the change in the quantity. Well, that's just the change in y. And similarly, x2 minus x1 is just the change in x. So this constant rate of change, then visually, how does it show up in the graph, visually? It's the same as the slope, right? So this, all this stuff we're talking about, constant rate of change, the visual representation of that is the slope of this line, or how much y goes up for some change in x. Right? If the slope is greater, then we have some greater change in y for change in x. And so the slope will be greater. Greater, greater y increase for the same x increase means that line will have a steeper slope. Okay, but slope, slope is like an afterthought. Okay, it's not the focus. The focus is how these quantities are changing together. How does y change as x changes? And then the slope is just how it shows up visually on the graph. Okay, it's not the foc it's not the central focus. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's practice this stuff. Let's practice. And I've got a, a task for you here. And the task is um, the, the, your, your goal or your steps are in blue, okay? So a soldier lowers an American flag from the top of a flagpole that's 14.5 meters tall, okay? And so what I'm giving you here is uh, T and H values, corresponding T and H values. And the, your first task is to define a time and a height Variables, uh, define time and height variables T and H in this situation. Remember, so we're practicing defining variables well, right? We had three criteria for defining variables well. So that's what you're going to do first. And then also define delta T and delta H. What do those mean? That's step one. Step two here is you're going to look over here. You're going to, you're going to look simultaneously here at some, some delta T values and look at the T values over here, and you're going to pick... Um, you're going to pick intervals, a starting t and a final t, from these that have this change in t. Is that task clear? So, for instance, if uh, if t went from two to eight point five, what would the change in t be? If t went from two to eight point five, six point five. So, if over here in delta t there was a six point five, you could put two to eight point five, and that would have a delta t of six point five. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to look at these delta t's, and you're going to find intervals starting and ending values of t that will give you those delta t's. And notice I'm asking you to repeat a few, okay, because there's more than one way to get the same change in t, and I'm asking you to repeat those. That's number two. And then number three, you're gonna, based on what you picked for your starting and ending values of t, you're going to calculate the corresponding changes in h, and you're going to fill those in the table over there, okay? And then number four, once we have those, that table filled out, then we're going to go back and review what three questions can you ask to determine if H varies at a constant rate with respect to T. And that goes to what we just summarized with our slide there. Okay? So any questions on what you're doing here? So you're going to take about five or ten minutes to work through steps one, two, three, and four. Work together. Get a partner. Is the task clear? Okay, I'm going to take attendance while you work on that. Okay, if you want to check your variables, do that quickly, but focus on step two. Step two and three are what we want to motor through here. Anybody have a question? Where at? These two? Five. Five. Change the change five. So, yeah. So 
height. No, the change in height. Mm -hmm. Delta means the change in height. The corresponding change in height to whatever you picked for okay. your T's. So you're going to use the table. So we don't actually care about where the mark is. Like, we just care about, like... Yeah, remember, that's what a change, a change can be at the beginning, the middle, or the end. Yeah. Yep. The corresponding change to whatever change in height. Thank you. There's no, like... First question? So how to define the variables? That's what I should show you in red. How to define the variables and what's the criteria for defining the variables? To be quantity, specific, and then units. So that's what I've done in red. Is there a question? Yeah, it should be quick. Once you get the hang of it, you should be able to rattle these off. Yep. Yeah. No, but it's from 5.5 to 7. So from start to finish, right? You go from start to finish, not from finish to start, right? So to change 1.5, you're going to start at some, some T, and you're going to increase 1.5 to start to finish, right? So it's actually the easiest one. So how can we get a change from zero? <laughs> the, you only have one choice there. So let's just do a couple before we're going to let's keep working, but um, So here's an example. Maybe you did 2 to 3.5 for the first 1.5. And so then you come over here and you look from 2 to 3.5, what's the corresponding change in H? So it starts at 12.1 and ends at 10.3. So how do you calculate the change in H? Final minus initial, and you get? You don't get 1.8. 
Negative, right? Final minus initial. We know that negative matters because negative means what about the height? Decrease, right? A, a negative change means a decrease in the quantity. So it matters. It matters. Final minus initial. Okay, so just take like one more minute and finish, finish the table. Okay, April, give me another one point five that you got. From what to what? Um, 3.5 to 5. 3.5 to 5. Does it work? And then what was your corresponding change in H? You also got negative 1.8 for that one. Is it Garrison? Yeah. Give me another one for 1.5. Did you get a third one? Eight point five to ten. And what'd you get for that change in H? Negative, Negative one point eight. Okay. Uh, change of three. Colby. There's only one Colby in the class. Can't speak. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. How about so? What, what's your name? Uh, Dominic. Dominic. Go for it. Two to five. Corresponding change in H. Negative three point six. Is there a Na Nasim? Where's Nasim? How about you? What'd you get for um, the next three? Change of three. Five point okay, five point five is a good starting place, but if our change is three, what will we end up? Eight point five. And then what'd you get for the corresponding change in H? Negative three point six. Okay. Jose. Is it Jose, is that right? Yeah. Tell me a change of five. Three point five to eight point five. And what'd you get for the corresponding change in H? Negative six. Okay. Another change of five. Tell me your name right up here. Eric, uh, five to ten. Five to ten. And what'd you get for that change in H? Uh, negative six. Okay, so these these will be different. You might there's lots of choices here. Last one has to be from zero to ten. And what'd you guys get for the change in H from zero to ten? Negative twelve. Negative twelve. Okay. What's the, so number four, what's the first perspective we could ask about is this, so we want to now see, it's this constant rate of change. What's the first thing we can ask? Jonathan, say it louder. So given some change in, say, T, do you always get a consistent change in H? Given a change in T, do you get a consistent change in H for that same change in T? Is that what the evidence shows here? Yeah. Do equal changes in T result in consistent changes in H? And they do. I mean, that's what the evidence is showing, right? We have some examples of that, and it seems like that's, that's the case. Every time the change in T is 1.5, the change in H is negative 1.8. Every time the change in T is 3, the change in H is negative 3.6. This seems to be following this pattern of constant rate of change, whereas if you apply the same change in T, you get the same change in H, and that's evidence of constant rate of change. Okay, 
So if, if we are assuming constant rate of change, then what is the constant rate? What is the constant rate of change? How can we calculate that? Okay, so if, if it goes down 12 every 10 seconds, then what we're saying is we want to know how much it goes down every one second. So how do we calculate if it goes down 12 every 10 seconds? How much does it go down every one second? Yeah, you're just going to divide. You're going to take 12, divide it up into 10 equal pieces, and you'll get how much it goes down every one second. All right, and so likewise, if it goes down 6 every 5 seconds, how far does it go down every one second? We would take that six that it goes down in five seconds and break it up into five equal pieces. Okay, and so we could do that for, we could set this up for all of them and for all of them we'll get negative 1.2 and in general, someone over here said, so generally speaking, where does that negative 1.2 come from? Someone said it. Dividing what? It's not the y point and the x point. We want to be really specific. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you said before. Delta h over delta t. That's our constant rate. And in this case, it's negative 1.2. What are the units on that? Negative 1.2 what? If it's delta h over delta t. That's the constant rate of change. This, this flag is coming down steadily. Negative 1.2 meters every second. And that's the constant rate of change. And that's that constant. So here's number two, right? This is our second perspective is that the ratio of the change in H to the change in T, it maintains a constant. Okay. Do changes in H and T maintain a constant ratio? Yes, they do. We just showed that. So if you divide the change in H by the change in T, you get the constant rate of change K. You get negative 1.2. Okay, what was our third? Our third perspective on constant rate of change. Oh, no, so actually, let's ask another question here. What about H and T? Do H and T maintain a constant ratio? So what I want you to find is... I want you to find h over t for 3.5 seconds and say 7 seconds, okay? So find the value of h over t for 3.5 seconds right here and for 7 seconds. Find the value of h, the height, divided by the time elapsed. Let's do that quick. So what's h divided by t at 3.5 seconds and at 7 seconds? And let's, let's look at that ratio. The ratio of the quantities themselves. Okay, anybody got it for 3.5 seconds? I got 2.943. Did you get 2.943? Okay, similarly, what'd you get for 7 seconds? Uh, so was it 6.1? 0 0.871. Okay, so the value of h over t, is it maintaining a constant ratio? No, it's changing. Okay, so what about our quantities h and t? Are they in constant rate of change or not? Are they in constant rate of change or not? No, they're not. Everyone agree with that? Anyone think they are? What's the test for constant rate of change of two quantities? What's the test? That those quantities maintain a constant ratio? No. The changes in the quantities maintain a constant ratio. Remember that whole thing I did at the beginning, the three perspectives? It's all about analyzing the changes in your quantities to see if those two quantities maintain a constant rate. Do we need the ratio of H and T to be in a constant ratio in order to have constant rate of change? No, it's about how... The height changes as time changes. So this does not, this doesn't thwart us, all right? It doesn't, it doesn't mean that H and T are not in a constant rate. Quite on the contrary, okay? What needs to be in a constant ratio? The change of H and the change of T. Okay, so 
the fact that t is going up and h is going down, these could ne this could never maintain a constant ratio because one is time is increasing while height decreases. You could never have a constant ratio of those two, but you can have constant rate of change. Okay, the height always goes down negative one point two times as much as the the time increases, and that brings us to our last one. What's the last test? Is the change in height a constant multiple of the change in time? So we're asking, is there some number? I'll do, doesn't matter, black. So is there some number that you multiply the change in time by to get the change in h? And it's always the same number. Yes or no? Is there a number that if you knew that the change in time was 10, could you get the change in height by multiplying by something? What would you multiply by? Negative 1.2. <coughs> and if your change in height was 1.5, if there's constant rate, then we should also be able to multiply by negative 1.2 to get the corresponding change in height. And it works. So those are our three. Given a consistent change in time, you're going to get the same a consistent or uh, an equal change in height every time. That's number one. The change in height to the change in time maintains a constant ratio. And any change in height can be calculated by multiplying the corresponding change in time by this constant rate of change. And which two quantities are in constant rate of change? Are we talking about the changes or the T and H? No, we're talking about the quantities T and H. In order to analyze whether two quantities, are, two quantities are a constant rate of change, the criteria is, is looking at the changes. We're talking about these two, whether these are in constant rate of change, whether the height changes at a constant rate with respect to time. The criteria for checking that is means analyzing the changes and having those three things be true about the changes. Okay? So we're asking, are T and H in constant rate of change? Do their changes maintain a constant ratio? Does the ch an equal change in one give a consistent change in the other, et cetera? Do you see? The, these are the quantities in focus. We analyze the changes, apply those three criteria to see if um, we have constant rate of change. So quickly here, let's graph it. Okay, so which perspective am I showing here? So, so this is our this is time. This is our t here, and this is our h. We're analyzing t and h, and I'm looking at some consistent equal changes in time. If it's constant rate of change, what should be true? Resulting changes in H are equal. Okay? Similarly. That's supposed to be straight. Let's pretend. Okay? So we've got a black. Red and blue there. So what am I showing here? That the change in height would always be in the same ratio to, the ch to its change in time. So the black, that ratio of change in height to change in time will be the same as the ratio of the red change in height to change in time. It will be the same ratio as the blue change in height to change in time. And that change in height is always what? To get the change in height, you could take the change in time and do what?
times negative 1 is given. Any change in time, the change in height will be, in this case, negative 1.2 times that change in height. Okay, so keep practicing those, and that's why I'm having you write those out in recitation. Okay, because as you do problems, you, again, you want to view those problems and the analysis and solving them through the lens of those three perspectives on constant rate of change. All right, so open up your book to page 35. Your workbook, your workbook out, 35. So we've seen what the graph is. When you have constant rate of change between two quantities, what kind of graph do you get? So all those dots form what? All those points form what kind of graph? A line. Okay? So we want to move now to talking about building that equation of that line. Okay? And we want to use our understanding of constant rate of change to do it. So here we've got a situation. Do you have a graph that looks like that on page 35? The length of a burning candle decreases at a constant rate of 2.2 .2 inches per hour. Let's stop right there. What does that number mean? So can we make some conclusions about that number? If, if the constant rate is, two, is um, it's decreasing at 2.2 .2 inches per hour, then what can we conclude about the number 2.2? .2? What can we say? Negative. Okay, first of all, it's negative. Good. And what does that number mean? Negative 2.2. .2. For every change in one hour on the x-axis, it will change negative 2.2 .2 on the y. He says for every hour that goes by, the candle's going to decrease or go down 2.2 .2 inches. Agreed? Okay. So what about mathematically? What can we set up mathematically? What is that? What does negative 2.2 .2 then equal? Okay. And mathematically, so can we write something... Change in um, the change in hours over the change in um, no sorry the change in inches over the change in hours. Good. So let's if the length we'll call it, we'll make the length y and our um, time will be x. So if our length is y and our time is x, it'd be which what it would be. It would be delta y over delta. X. Good. Right? If we have that constant rate change of negative 2.2, .2, that means um, that's equal to delta y over delta x. What if we needed to calculate a change in y? How could we use this, the constant rate, to calculate a change in y? Tell me your name in the back. Marcel. Marcel. So I need to calculate a change in the height of the candle. How can I use the constant rate to do that? What would it be? Equal to. Tell me your name. Yeah. Ethan. Yeah. Um, you do a change in the uh, final uh, minus initial. Okay, but I want to use the constant rate to do it. That's true. You could do final y minus initial y, but I want to use the constant rate of change to calculate this change in y. Yeah. Right. This was another perspective that the constant, the change in our one quantity is always a constant multiple of the change in the other, right? So we can just. If we ever want a change in y, we can take negative 2.2 .2 times the change in x to get the change in y. Okay, so let's work through this. I think the first question it says is we want to represent on the graph a change of 2 hours on this graph, starting at 3.5 hours. So how will, what will I do here? Draw a vertical, diagonal, or horizontal line? I want to represent a change of time, horizontal change in time of two, so that will be about to here. Okay, so that's a delta x equal to two. Positive two because it's to the right, right? Heading to the right means increasing time, positive two. And what will happen to the height in those two hours? What will happen to the height in those two hours? How'd you know that? Yes, right. We can use this right here that the change in y is negative 2.2 .2 times that change in x. So it's going to go down 4.4. <coughs> Something like that. 
So delta y is negative 2.2 times delta x, which equals negative 4.4. So then our goal is then what is the, after two hours, what's the final height of the candle? What's the length of the candle? After two hours. So how can we reason about this? At what height did it start at? 8.3. And the change was? The change was negative 4.4. So how can you find the new height of the candle? New length of the candle? So really want, what we're looking for is um, final y. How can we calculate the final y? The final y equals? It's not really subtracting. We're not subtracting. We've got an initial y. And what are we going to do to that initial y to get the final y? Yeah, you're going to subtract 4.4. But really what we're doing is we're really adding the change. You see? The final value of y is the initial value of y. This would make perfect sense. You start at some value of quantity. If you add the change to it, you'll get the final value. It should make perfect sense. So what was our initial value of y? 8.3. 8.3. What was our change? Negative 4.4. Therefore, our final value is 3.9. Is that showing up on the screen? Good. Okay. So there's our final value. Um, we started at 3.5, we add the change of 2, so we got five, at 5.5 hours, the candle is 3.9. Okay, so we're going to use this, so what was the process? The process was apply a change in x to a given point. Second step was to find the corresponding change using constant rate of change, right? Using our principle of constant rate of change, find the corresponding change in y. So find delta y, which equals k delta x. And then we're going to use the idea of the final y equals initial y plus the change in y. So this kind of reasoning, being able to work through this kind of reasoning is much more powerful than figure, doing mx plus b, figuring out m, figuring out b, and writing mx plus b, okay? And that's where we're going. We're, we're going to write, in a second here, we're going to write the equation of the line. But this is a lot more powerful way of thinking. If you can, if you can understand this dynamically as how the two quantities are changing together, you're far better off than memorizing a formula, okay? And so that's what we're really encouraging. All right, so again, we're going to apply delta x. We're going to find the corresponding change in y using constant rate of change principle. And then we're going to um, get the final y is the initial y plus the change in y. Okay, so here we go on that. Yeah? So what was the starting time? And what was our change in time? No, our change in time. Our starting time was 3.5 hours, and our change in time was how much? No, a change in time. It's horizontal. It's the very first thing we did. We did a change in time of two hours. We started at 3.5 hours, and we applied a change in time of two hours. It's horizontal. Oh, okay. And that gave us a resulting 5.5. See it? Yeah. Okay, so let's do it again, but this time... So here's that point we found, and we know that, so what was it, 5.5 and 3.9? We know that there's, how many time values and corresponding lengths of the candle are there? How many time and corresponding lengths are there? Infinite, right? Lots and lots. And all those, all those taken together form? All those points form a line because the, the, the candle is decreasing in length with constant rate of change. So that's supposed to be, those are supposed to be in a line, okay? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to call x, y any point. So I'm just going to pick any point here. Say this one right here. It, it, we're not looking at the values. We're just we're saying this represents any one of these points. And so we're going to say it's x, y. Okay, so I could have picked this one. I could have picked this one. I could have picked this one. I could have picked one up here. doesn't matter. Does it make sense? So that x, this x, y I'm highlighting represents every point on the line. And how are we going to start? What was our first step to find what? Change in x. How do we calculate the change in x? What is it? So tell, tell me. No, but now we're saying it's any. It's x and y is our, our final point. Is any point in this line, we're calling it x, y. Okay, so what is the change in x now from starting from 3.5? Somebody knows. April. She wants x minus 3.5. Final x minus initial x. That's it. Next step, who wants to take it from there? What do we find next? What do we want next? And so let me draw that. I'll draw it in red. So there it is right there. That's the delta x we just found, x minus 3.5. Who can take it from there? Is it Chris? No, tell me your name. Uh, Alex. Alex, tell me. Why? Why? We're going to use constant rate of change to do it. Okay, so you just so how do we calculate a change in y? Okay, so that's true, but we want to use constant rate of change to calculate it. How do we use constant rate of change to do it? Robert. K change in x. Okay, so let's fill in the blanks here. What's k? Change of y. No, what's given? No, negative two point two, right? And what's our change in x? x minus 3.5. So there's our change in y. k delta x. Changes in one quantity are a constant multiple of changes in the other. So our change in y is negative 2.2 times that 3.5. Okay, final step. Our goal is now what? Our goal is really writing this. We want to know what that final y value is. Final y equals? What's the final y equal? Yes, sir. Almost. So we started initial, and then we apply the change, right? If you start an initial value and apply the change, you're going to get the new value of y. So what was the initial value of y? 8.3. And what's our change in y? Negative 2.2. X minus 3.5. So we just wrote the, the coordinates of every point on our line. That's called the equation of the line. That's the equation of the line. We just wrote the coordinates of every point on the line. Given an x, you'll apply that. You get the change in x. You get the corresponding change in y. You'll add it to the initial y. And you'll get the, the new, the, the final value of y. So this is the equation of the line. <laughs> this process of building it is what we're emphasizing, understanding what's going on as those two quantities change together. So I didn't really finish the picture there. So here's our, here's our change in x. Here's our corresponding change in y which was this, and then the final value of y, the y-coordinate of this point could be, you know, depending on what we picked for the change in x, then is this down here, which is the initial y plus the initial y, 8.3, plus the change in y. Is there a question? 
Okay, so what, what I want you to do is do that same thing on number three, page 36. So don't, um, so instead of um, the question they're asking, they're going to they're gonna lead you th um, through starting at x equals 2.9 to going to x equals 7.2. So instead, go from x equals 2.9 to x, any point x, just like this last thing we did. So your goal is to use the same process to build the equation of the line through those two points. Build the equation of the line through those two points. Now you have, you'll have an initial step at the beginning that is a little bit different than what we did. Right? You can figure that out. So, Rather than follow the instructions on number three, you're going to do this process and fill the equation of the line for number three. Okay? Number three. So you're doing number three, but you're building the actual equation of that line through those points rather than rather than the x equals seven point two thing. So ignore the x equals seven point two thing and build the equation of the line through those two points. Practicing what we just did. Figure out the constant rate of change. You've got to figure out what the constant rate of change is, and if you're following what's going on, you should be able to do that. First, find the constant rate, and then you're home free. Right, I want you to use x so that you build the equation of the line like I just did for the candle. Yeah. Use x instead of 7.2, and if you follow the process, you'll build the equation of the line. Yeah. Just like we just did, that's right. Robert, what'd you get for the constant rate? 2.2? 2.4? 2.4? Okay, so you should have calculated the constant rate by change in y divided by change in x. That's our constant rate of change. And you should get 2.4. You're okay. You know what you're doing. Uh, the 2.4s are outnumbering you. First step to build the equation of the line is what? What's that? Find, do a change in x. Starting at 2.9, we want the change in x from 2.9 to any point x. So how, what does that look like? That looks like this right here. That change in x right there. 
Tell me, what is it? What's the change in x? X minus 2.9. That's how much x changes if it's starting at 2.9 and ending here like that. It's going to this point, 2.9. What's next? The change in y. Corresponding change in y is? The constant rate of change times the change in x, right? You can calculate changes in y by a constant times the change in x. And our, that is our changes in y are always 2.4 times changes in x. Finally, what's our goal? Our goal is to write this right here. What does that value of y right there? y equals? Initial y plus, so we had some initial value of y here. This was our initial y. And we ended up at some final y here. And how do we get there? We went through that change in y. So initial y plus the change in y gives us the final y. Blue. Again, what was our initial y? 5.16. Change in y? That equation of that line is a very powerful thing because we know what everything means, right? <laughs> we started at some value of y, and we changed by this much because we had a change in x. And we know we can get that change in y by multiplying by the constant rate, 2.4, will always give us the corresponding change in y. Added to the initial y gives us the final y. And so that then represents every single point on the line. Anybody have a question? Does it make sense? Okay, top hat. Get your internet out. Top hat. Quiz on today's stuff. Hurry. So you have enough time. If you paid attention, it should be easy.